So what does it really mean when we talk about malefic or benefic planets? Or what we call in Vedic astrology, cruel or gentle? So, yeah, if you've been studying astrology for more than five minutes, you've probably heard the words benefic or malefic. And these are the, the words in Western astrology. And these are old classical kind of medieval words. Malefic comes from the Latin root mal, meaning like evil, malevolent, you know, and benefic meaning like benevolent and good. So if you like in the old days of astrology, if you read a lot of the old medieval texts from either Europe or India, they kind of just break planets down as being either malefic or benefic, like having evil results or good results. And that's the most super basic way of doing astrology. There's much more sophisticated ways of doing it, but that's one of the most elementary basic ways of doing it. And a lot of the textbooks don't go even further than that. They just talk about, you know, a malefic in this house gives a bad result. A benefic there gives a good result. We know that there are much more intricate systems and ways to do this. But in general, that does work pretty well. And that's why that was, uh, why that is part of the tradition. So what does Vedic astrology really have to say about this malefic benefic thing? So in Vedic astrology, this is called, uh, we have different words because it's based in Sanskrit, right? So we're not using this malefic or benefic terms. We're using the terms Krura and Samya, okay? So Krura is typically translated as cruel and is actually where the root of the word cruel comes from because even though it's politically incorrect to say it these days like basically all your european languages comes from sanskrit or a proto-indo-european root language which doesn't really exist and we haven't really found it because it's politically incorrect just to acknowledge that it came from sanskrit that's my opinion though um but if it wasn't coming from Sans sanskrit it was a very 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 close language that was pretty much you know indistinguishable almost and so Krura, cruel, you know, so Krura planets are cruel planets. This is the Sun, Saturn, Rahu, Mars, and then when the Moon is waning or when Mercury is with a, one of these other planets, it becomes cruel. And then the Samya planets are all of the others. Oh, K2 is cru cruel too. So there's more cruel planets than there are gentle ones, and that's that does relate to life. When you experience life, most of the foods you want to eat or things you want to eat in nature are going to be cruel to your digestive system and are not going to be gentle. You know, that's just one example. Um, and the other planets, waxing moon, Mercury on its own or with other benefics, and then Jupiter and Venus are the Samya planets. But here is the thing, you guys, is that this, I was reading the Sanskrit dictionary the other night, just kind of bored looking at things, and uh, I read the definition of these words, <clears throat> Krura and Samya. And I had never actually read the official Sanskrit definition of these words. It's much more sophisticated. It's not just this cruel and gentle thing. Um, I'll try to pull up the definition um, here as an image. But Krura basically means, actually it means wounded. It means hurt. That's what it actually means. It doesn't, uh, in a literal sense, <clears throat> it does not actually mean, uh, well, or it, it, yeah, it does mean cruel, like in a literal sense, that is one of the definitions, but that is actually not the first main definition given. The first definition given is wounded, then hurt, then sore, bloody, raw, then cruel, fierce, ferocious, pitiless, harsh, formidable, inauspicious, uh, disagreeable, and other words, because all Sanskrit words have like many, many, you know, um, definitions, right? But this is the thing is that it doesn't just mean cruel, it means wounded. So I had this major aha moment because I was like, oh, like in psychology, what are we doing with astrology and reading the charts? We're the cruel planets, the Krura Grahas are just showing where you're wounded karmically, where you have a karmic wound. You hear so much of people talking about wounds in psychology. You know, all these great healers have, that's just the, the best way to use the word in English, you know, like 
healing your wounds. You might have a father wound or a rejection wound or, you know, if you've had readings from me, you've heard me talk about this and all the intricate um, things that healers and psychologists have learned to work through with all these different issues, like the masks we wear. Um, you know, we wear, when we have the rejection wound, we wear a mask of withdrawing, you know, or all these things. So what I'm trying to get is everybody these days is focused on psychological healing and healing their wounds and astrology and Vedic astrology is oftentimes just seen as like more focused on predictive stuff but it's actually so much better at the psychological healing wound side than Western astrology and you can see this in the intelligence in the words they were using because they weren't using such medieval like fatalistic words as like male evil you know malefic all these plants are evil all these plants are benefit and good and benevolent that's like so black and white and it's important to teach you know it's important to teach astrology in very black and white ways so that you students understand it but you have to understand that in real life it's always going to be more mixed and nuanced and that's why also even the Vedic old books will speak in very like black and white extreme ways so that you just really get the picture. But in reality, <clears throat> that <clears throat> that yoga it is talking about will not usually come out that extreme. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is just like a really cool, simple introductory concept that I want you guys to know about. And as a technique, this is just already a technique in itself. Just look you want to know where you're wounded at, look at where the Krura Grahas are at. Um, if someone has, say, Saturn in the 10th house, then they might have a father wound. If someone has Saturn, the Krura planet in the 4th house, they might have a mother wound. Didn't get enough love from the mother growing up. Um, and this is incredibly helpful to work with a psychologist or an astrologer or a type of astrologer who's more kind of like a therapist and psychologist, kind of like me and a lot of the other people that do the tropical Vedic astrology movement. Um, so, yeah, like a cruel planet in the second house. You might have a food wound. Like I have Rahu in the second house, and I've had plenty of food-related wound-type experiences I've had in my life, you could say. Um, just being a yogi and vegetarian, trying to get enough food to survive in the Bible Belt, was quite a challenge and still is quite a challenge to be to be blunt that's why i had never gained weight until i went to india and lived in india for four months it's the only time i was ever able to gain weight that's kind of gnarly right um so we have these yeah so crew are basically crew or graha where you're going to be wounded now flipping it back to now the other one not we don't use the word benefic we use the word samya Samya literally means like of or pertaining to Soma, the moon. Soma refers to three things specifically. It's a name for the moon. It's a name for the god related to the moon, Soma, the god of immortality, worldly immortality, as you guys know if you've taken the Nakshatra course. <clears throat> Talked about this for hours. Um, and then the third one is Soma, the drink the ambrosia, the drink of immortality that the gods would drink. <clears throat> so think of these things when you think of a Samya planet. So a Samya planet is not just gentle. It is, that is one of the definitions, but it's that's like a little too cut and dry. You guys will get a lot more out of understanding the Samya planets by understanding that this means relating to soma the juiciness of life like soma was literally the ideal of nectar juiciness ambrosia so you see like venus or moon these samya planets they're going to show you <clears throat> they're going to show you like where uh that's just going to show you where the juiciness of life is going to come through you know and uh that, that's so this is why this word in a sense this word just means auspicious you know like that is one of the other definitions given and also cool and moist you know or even northern resembling the moon placid gentle mild but the main thing is that it is it means connected to relating to or dealing with soma which or having soma like having the nature or qualities of soma that's what that samya kind of uh, suffix means and so 
so soma is the god of rejuvenation and of healing and of immortality and of empowerment so like you see the anywhere the samya grahas are at they show where you're rejuvenating where you're healing where you're empowering yourself you're doing the opposite of the krura part where you're wounded so from this i've got this like whole new kind of paradigm of looking at astrology just from rereading these or reading these words truly as they are defined in the in the um sanskrit dictionaries so <clears throat> yeah you can just see that the krura planets are where we are coming into life wounded from past life karma we have a wound there and we're going to need to work harder to develop that and you're going to want to work with them to develop that in sessions and sometimes that means just crying for an hour about that issue and area of life maybe even um and then the gentle planets they may not even ask you much about that because that's going smoothly and they're revitalizing and they're enjoying that area of life um <clears throat> you could say see someone switching from a dasha from a really strong benefic samya rejuvenating planet into a cruel rahu dasha or something and then you can, you know, you could kind of see like, oh man, well, things are going really great with you. You need to really appreciate this woman you've got in your life and all these things, because when things shift, you may not appreciate her enough and you may end up losing her or being cruel or, and then getting wounded or something, or just, you get what I'm saying. These, I'm just making up examples off the top of my head, but you could use this with timing, with dashas um, and everything. But yeah, just think about your, like as a very basic way to to start learning astrology for those of you that are beginners or even for me after almost 20 years i'm still like blown away by this idea of thinking about where are my cruel planets those are just my general places of wounds that i've had in my life and how i'm healing them and then the benefit planets what houses and what signs they're in show where i'm naturally healing and naturally rejuvenating and have more of this juiciness and enjoyment of life you know in a modern context it's very helpful to use this angle because we don't really live in this world where everything is like evil and good and black and white anymore you know or even then we probably didn't like i said it was just taught in a way these things were taught in extreme ways in the old books just to paint the picture fully <clears throat> but that's not really how it is and this framework puts less of a sense of judgment on yourself or other clients really if you're going to be saying like evil planet or benevolent planet or if you just say it's wounded and hurt planet you know what i mean that kind of disarms the situation a lot quicker and this is a healing and rejuvenating somnia planet but this is the other cool thing is that um this shows where we are going to be healed where we're going to be healing in the course of this life and rejuvenating but it's also showing like where we're going to help heal others and then in, or be able to. And then in the other side where we're wounded is where we are also going to wound others if we're not mindful of this wound. But if it's a really strong conscious chart, we'll be working through that wound and we will learn and change, change our habits and change those patterns, stop wounding others and thus stop receiving these karmic wounds either and stop wounding ourselves. And then um, even actually be able to kind of heal and help others in that area of life as it unfolds. Okay, so that's basically what we mean when we talk about in the Vedic philosophy, when we're talking about, if I use the word benefic or mal malefic, that's just because we borrow all, we have to borrow all these words, we're using English, and so it's kind of interchangeable. But the real term is krura, wounded, or Samya healing healed or healing or rejuvenating you can think of it all those same ways and yeah so Vedic does use this same idea but in a more sophisticated way we could say all right thanks you guys um, this is a video that I'm going to be putting on in my uh, I'm publicly going to be sharing it just because good useful basic info but I'm also going to be putting it on in my astrology course that I'm teaching on patreon currently and it's ongoing uh, because I think it's really important, like great fundamental way to think of the planets. Okay, thanks you guys.